This is the new Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV, and it brings in a whole slew of new updates from the previous One Mark III. It introduces the new 85 to 125 millimeter true optical zoom lens. Wow! It's now got 4K 120 frames per second HDR recording on all the lenses. It's got multi-frame HDR in video, 20 frames per second HDR burst, no blackout frames in photo on all the lenses. And it's even got seamless zooming and recording in video using you guessed it, on all the lenses. And all of this is compatible with the vlog monitor. No way! We're currently traveling right now. This is our first time here in Singapore, and I think we got the perfect phone to document our first week here. So here's our first real-world impressions on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. All right, before we begin, just a quick disclaimer. If you're new around here, my name is Jason Vong, and my videos tend to focus more on the experiential side of things rather than heavy spec talks. Pretty much how it works, how good it works, and what are some of the limitations to keep in mind. With that said, I will primarily focus on the camera and lens aspect of this device because I'm a photographer and videographer, a hybrid shooter, if you will. But this device here is also apparently really good for music creation and gaming as well. So do check out the other channels that are more dedicated in those fields. Other than that, the device that I have right here is an early production sample unit. Most of the important features are working, so we'll go over them in this video. And I'll continue having experiential videos on the Xperia 1 Mark IV for the next several months. So subscribe and stay tuned. All right, so let's quickly go over the look and feel of this device first. The biggest and most obvious thing to note is the six and a half inch 4K 120 Hertz OLED HDR display, which is apparently up to 50% brighter from the previous One Mark III. I'm always a fan of these big displays from the Xperia because we have incredible screen real estate, which is vital for camera apps. We can see more, we have more on-screen functions available to us, and it's a nice experience overall to edit our photos and videos on the mobile apps. Moving on, we got a headphone port right up here at the top. Thank you, Sony, for keeping that because that also doubles as a mic port with a TRRS connection. Now on the bottom, we got USB-C for charging, obviously, but also to pipe the connection between the vlog monitor, which we'll talk about later. Right next to it is an easily removable SIM tray plus expandable micro SD storage, which is a must, especially given the photo and video capability of this device. This sample unit that I have right here is equipped with 256 gigabyte of internal storage. Now off to the right side, we have a volume rocker, a power button that doubles as a fingerprint reader, and a dedicated embossed shutter button. Long pressing it when the device is in sleep mode will quickly bring up the Photography Pro app, and it feels very much like using a camera. Half pressing it will activate the focus, and full pressing it will take the photo. Overall, it's very slim, feels really nice in the hands. So already you can tell we're very passionate about the photography and videography capabilities of this device. And that's how we sort of approach the Xperia phones. A slim camera that can connect to 5G and Wi-Fi that also runs on Android OS. Now, some of you might have been following along my experience videos with the previously announced Xperia Pro Eye and may be asking, how does the One Mark IV compare to it? As a Pro Eye user for seven months now, I can tell you that the Pro Eye is still in a very different class of its own, primarily due to the one inch sensor back in the 24 millimeter lens. That and the dual aperture really separates the image quality between these two devices. Pretty much a pocket RX100 camera. Well, more of a slim wallet 24 millimeter only RX100 camera, but if we look at the total range of the Pro Eye, it caps us at only 50 millimeters. On the other hand, the One Mark IV aims to be the whole package. They're partnering up with Zeiss again, giving us optical lenses in 16 millimeter, 24 millimeter, and wait for it, 85 to 125 millimeter. Keep that dash in mind. Now, while the One Mark IV doesn't have the one inch sensor like the Pro Eye, what it does have is the 4K 120 frames per second readout sensor on all the lenses. So you can shoot 4K 60 and 120 frames per second on all the lenses. Something you can do just on the 24 millimeter on the Pro Eye. So let's go ahead and get into the magic and talk about that dash between the 85 millimeter to 125 millimeter. If you're familiar with the previous One Mark III, it has a 70 millimeter comma 105 millimeter telephoto lenses sharing the same lens spot. And so where Sony made advancement in this area is instead of just two separate optical telephoto lenses, we can actually use the full optical range between 85 to 125. For example, I can be at like 98 millimeter and it would still be using actual glass as opposed to digital zoom. How this works is that there's a prism mirror inside here, so the zooming is made possible by shifting the mechanism left and right instead of back and forth, like how we're used to on actual zoom lenses. 
pretty amazing they've accomplished something like this on a slim form factor like this. And we still do have digital zooms between 17 millimeter to 24 millimeter, 25 millimeter to 85 millimeter, and beyond 125 millimeter, going all the way up to 375 millimeter digitally. But again, the best quality is always going to come from the optical lenses themselves. And oh my God, these telephoto lenses here are straight fire. These are some of the shots here with the 85 to 125 millimeter lens and sheesh, they are gorgeous. For my more devout followers, y'all know how crazy I am for the 85 millimeter lens. And I always say telephoto lenses are one of the best and easiest ways to elevate your shots. We will always get nice foreground and background separation, and we can turn any boring background into epic background drop for our subjects. And because it's optical, it just looks so good. No digital, no AI tinkering in any of these shots here. And we get some nice, real foreground and background bokeh. Of course, good lighting does come into play, but you can see what are some of the possibilities with true optical glass elements. So with that in mind, let's move on to seamless zoom. In the Videography Pro app, we have a feature called Seamless Zoom, which while you're recording, you can zoom from 16 millimeter all the way to 375 millimeter without needing to stop recording, change lens, and then continue recording. However, it's kind of a misnomer. I would say it's more of a seamless recording because we can continue recording while zooming the whole spectrum, but when it jumps to the next lens, there will be a slight shift in framing. So just keep that in mind. But it is cool to know that you won't miss out on the few seconds of recording just because you need to zoom in and out just to get a better framing of something. Now, already in this conversation, we are already pretty video heavy, and I promise you I'll get into the photo side of things later, but it's hard not to focus on the video side of things right now simply because of how much advancement is in the video department. Mainly the 4K 120 frames per second readout sensor on all the lenses. You can shoot some really nice slow motion up to 120 frames per second in 4K, sort of like using a Sony a7S III. Though keep in mind, once you shoot in 4K 60 or 4K 120, you will lose out on stabilization, eye autofocus, and object tracking autofocus. Now, not the biggest deal, especially coming from the Pro Eye. I love using these devices on a gimbal, and I prefer to control my focus here instead of having it pulse around for the more trickier shots. On top of that, if you're shooting that high of a frame rate, chances are you're probably gonna be slowing it down in editing. The shakes will be barely noticeable anyway. Some of these shots that you're seeing right now are handheld between 85 to 125 millimeter and played back at 20% speed on a 24 frames per second timeline, and it looks butter. Now, of course, the lower frame rates like 24 and 30, you would still have stabilization, eye autofocus, and object tracking autofocus, which is great for vlogging, interviews, etc. But the 120 frames per second readout sensor is not only just useful for slow motion, but also for multi-frame HDR. Now, what is that? So in the Videography Pro app, there are two options for dynamic range, wide and standard. Standard is obviously just standard, but wide dynamic range shoots HDR frames at 120 frames per second and outputs it up to 30 frames per second. So what it's doing is it's shooting different frames in high exposure and different frames in low exposure and combines them together in real time for better dynamic range videos. And you can tell the highlights are way more controlled in the sky for these shots right here. And no, you don't have to shoot in HDR just to utilize this feature. You can still shoot in SDR and take advantage of the wide dynamic range, which is what you're seeing right now. Now, if you plan on vlogging, there's two ways you can do it. The first one is with the top front facing camera right here, which has a lot of improvements over the One Mark III, or you can use the newly introduced vlog monitor. Let's talk about the front facing camera first. It now has a 12 megapixel larger sensor over the 8 megapixel smaller sensor from the One Mark III. The One Mark IV also has the high readout with HDR support. It caps you at 4K 30 frames per second or 1080p 60 frames per second, which is still really good for a front facing camera. However, if you want to take full advantage of all the lenses here on the back, you can use the vlog monitor that was introduced alongside with the Pro I last year. And no, despite the name, you don't have to use it for vlogging. You can definitely rig it up in a way to help you frame your shots better, especially when you shoot at trickier angles. Now, because I know I'm going to get asked, the vlog monitor, as far as I know, only works with the Xperia Pro I and with this new one right here. It does not work with the alpha cameras. I do wish it does though. Anyways, if you want more information on how the vlog monitor works, definitely check out my video here demo with the Xperia Pro I. I know it's a different phone, but the way that it's being used is pretty much the same. Plus, the vlog monitor provides you a three and a half millimeter mic jack, same as the one on the cameras, so you can actually use different mics with this set up here. 
Moving on, just really quickly, inside the Videography Pro app, there's an option to stream to YouTube or a different platform that supports RMTP. And this is just more of a heads up, I haven't gotten a chance to test it out yet, but definitely tune back to the channel to get more experiential updates with the Xperia 1 Mark IV. All right, let's shift gear and talk about photography now. We have real-time tracking and real-time eye autofocus for humans and animals, bringing in that juicy alpha tech. Of course, you can shoot in RAW, and one of my favorite things to do with these types of camera phones is edit the RAWs in Lightroom Mobile. However, if you're a try-and-true JPEG shooter, there are a few new advantages with the One Mark IV. It still shoots in 20 frames per second burst, but now it's available in HDR on all the lenses, and it will stitch the photos together, creating some really nice results. What's newly added is more control over your white balance, specifically Typically, you can now dial in your own Kelvin temperatures and even make micro adjustments in the amber and blue, green and magenta like you could on the Alpha cameras. However, this does not exist in the Videography Pro app for some reason. Hopefully, they decide to include that in the future. But when you combine a lot of these new improvements on the Photography Pro app with the new 85 to 125 millimeter optical lens, it just opens up a lot more possibilities. So let's go ahead and move on to price and availability. So this will be $15.99, you can begin pre-ordering today, and it will be shipping out early September. And if you pre-order with the link, you will receive a free pair of WF-1000X Mark IV wireless earbuds. Wow! So with that said, again, we'll have more follow-up experiential videos the next several months on the Xperia 1 Mark IV to help you learn more about this device like I've done with the Pro Eye. So definitely follow along and stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!